What's up everybody, my name is Bobby and it's finally here, the best time of the year, the holidays. Now if you're like me, you're probably traveling to go visit friends or family or whatever it may be. So keeping in the holiday spirit, there's 10 different tech accessory items that I bring with me every single time I go on any trip, no matter what time of the year. And I'm gonna walk you guys through kind of my thought process of how I approach the airport and just dealing with the madness that is that. So you're not gonna wanna miss it, stay tuned. So starting off with number one, what would a packing video be without a bag to pack stuff in? So I'm not gonna be touching much on like my checked bag in this video, but as for the ones that I carry on, at least the airlines that I usually fly, you usually get a personal item along with like a carry on bag. So my absolute favorite choices for these bags are gonna be the Peak Design Everyday Carry in the 30 liter backpack along with the Peak Design Sling Bag. Now between these two, you kind of got one on your back, one across the front. They're modular style bags that let you kind of customize them based on whatever it is that you, you know, want to bring with you. My configuration when I'm doing like an airport travel is I usually have kind of like three different layers of stuff within my Peak Design backpack. And then I usually put like a sweater or a sweatshirt of some sort kind of in the top with the clamp lid that they, that the bag has. Um, it makes it really easy to kind of stuff a sweatshirt in if you get too hot or be able to pull it out if you get too cold on the plane. It's like a really versatile little kind of extra capacity that the bag has. And so I usually keep all my stuff for the most part that I'm not going to need like immediate access to within that bag itself. And then the sling bag comes in handy for kind of all the stuff that I want to have like really quick access to. So that's going to be like my wallet, a whole bunch of other things that I'm going to touch on in this video, but that's kind of the immediate access bag, if that makes sense. So on to number two has to do with the wallet situation. So for me, I have a wallet that is like my main wallet I use every single day. But when you're at the airport, you usually need access to, you know, your license or like maybe like a credit card if you're trying to get something at a store or something like that. Um, you usually want access to those things and you don't want to be pulling your wallet in and out, um, especially if you're carrying like, you know, a backpack and a sling bag. So what I usually do on my phone, I'll actually usually have the MagSafe wallet and I'll keep like two cards and my ID on it. So that that way when I go up to like the terminal, I have my boarding pass on my phone, I show them that, I pull out my ID from the back, show them that, and then I'm off to the races and I don't have to like fumble around with a wallet or like, you know, risk dropping it and then you're out your entire wallet. I don't know. I personally really like the MagSafe wallet. Now this year, I'm actually thinking of trying something different because with the MagSafe wallet, there's always like the risk of like, you know, when you take it off, it not staying on and it falls off or something like that. Um, I've never had that problem, but that is like a possibility. This company called Ghost Tech actually sent me some cases for the iPhone. Historically, I've always usually laughed at people who have holster cases, like the people who have like, you know, your dad has that belt clip and then he clips his phone into the side or like your grandpa or something like that. I usually laugh at that, but this particular combo comes with like the holster clip um, that you put on like a belt, or in this case, I'll probably put on my sling bag that I have strapped across the front of my chest. And then the case itself is a really durable case. You have obviously quick access to your phone and it has a slot for one card in the back. So I'll probably most likely put my license in the little slot on the actual case and then have the case clamped to the sling bag that's strung across my chest. And then that way I'll be able to just pop my phone off, show my boarding pass, pull out my ID and then boom, I'm done. So that's something that I'm probably gonna do this year since I'm going on a trip shortly. Um, Thought it was a cool idea. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But yeah, those are kind of my schools of thought as far as like a quick access wallet goes. Now, depending on how early you get on your flight, depending on how much you use your phone when you're at the airport or on a plane or on a trip of some sort, I always think it's a really good idea to have a backup battery of some sort. And not only is it useful for you, but you'll also be the savior of whoever you're traveling with because if you're watching this kind of video, you're probably into this stuff and you probably are the kind of person who likes to be prepared. But most people that at least I travel with are not that type of person. And so the amount of times someone's like, oh, do you have an extra phone charger or something along those lines? Then you get to go ahead and be the savior of 
Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever it may be. Now, I usually bring two and that's a little excessive, but hey, that's the kind of guy I am. As for the two batteries I bring, I usually bring a MagSafe battery that's really easy to just slap on the back of my phone and charge it up kind of passively. Um, my personal preference is the Zira Gen 2 and I have like a full review of that that I will link down in the description below. Now, MagSafe is super convenient, but sometimes you wanna be able to fast charge your phone and sometimes you wanna charge a different device that's not your phone, like some other sort of piece of tech and you'll wanna be able to charge your device up a little bit quicker. So I have this one by Juice Pack. I don't know if they still make it, uh, but I like this one a lot because it has USB-C and it has regular USB. Um, it has LED light indicators it's you know 20 watts of power output so it's gonna charge up almost all my devices pretty quickly I keep it inside like this little iPod sock I don't know if any of you remember iPod socks from back in the day but they were so great and I still use one to this day but I use it for my backup battery because then I can tuck my little charging cables in the actual sock as well so I have one that charges up my camera and one that charges up my phone and I kind of keep them on either side of the battery. That usually lives inside the sling bag. And then I also keep the MagSafe battery either on my phone or in there as well. So you kind of get both those options and that's kind of how I roll as far as like charging situation goes. Now, number four. I usually always bring with me a Nintendo Switch. Now, if you don't have a Nintendo Switch, maybe you should consider getting one because they're freaking awesome. I'm currently rocking the OLED Switch, which is the newest generation of it with a much better screen um, and a couple other you know, benefits, including like Bluetooth, which is super clutch when you're at an airport, being able to pair a pair of Bluetooth headphones. Pair a pair, pair a pair. Any of the other Switches though will work. Um, there's like the Switch Lite and then the traditional Nintendo Switch. There's so many games to choose between for every single you know, age, and maturity level. I know a lot of people kind of think sometimes that the Switch is for kids, but it's honestly like has a really wide range of games that you can play. So I'm really excited to kind of have some dedicated hours to where I can just play my Switch and not feel guilty about it. But yeah, and I usually rock that inside some sort of case that I keep inside my backpack. I don't usually keep that in the sling because that's not something I usually whip out unless I'm, you know, waiting for a boarding call in a terminal or I'm actually sitting on the plane itself. But I found this really cool switch case that works for like the normal switch along with the OLED switch and it's this really kind of sleek little, um, I don't even know what the material is. It's like not velvet, it's like cloth of some sort, felt, I don't know. It feels really dope. I throw that in my bag and it has slots for a couple games. I usually have a bunch of games with me tucked in my backpack somewhere like in this little holster that I have but having quick access to some of your favorites is always really nice as well. Now moving on to number five, probably one of my favorite items is an iPad. Now there's a bunch of different iPad options. I personally use the iPad Pro 11 inch. This thing I feel like is like the perfect sweet spot as far as like the size of the actual iPad itself and like how much power it has and how quick it is and all that jazz. But Usually what I use it for in this context is I will pre-download a bunch of TV shows or movies or something like that on either like Netflix or any, or YouTube even. You can download like long episodes of podcasts or that type of thing. You can pre-download those items so that you have them stocked if you get bored playing Switch or your hands get sore or something like that. I usually kind of bounce back and forth between the two depending on how long the flight is or whatever it is that I'm doing. Not only can you keep shows on it, but you can also store your favorite books if you want to actually read. You can also do audiobooks if you just want to listen paired up to the iPad itself. Another thing too that not everyone always thinks about is you can actually pretty much access any magazine, especially if you have Apple News Plus, you'll be able to access almost any magazine that exists in like a digital form. And looking at a magazine on an iPad it's honestly a really nice experience. I'm a big fan of it and you can download those so they're viewable offline. I'll usually go through and kind of like download a couple different ones that I wanna just skim through while I'm on the flight. And you're also able to have games on there as well. So if you're traveling with like kids or something like that, you're able to, you know, you, you can entertain them with show, all those things I just mentioned basically, but like, you know, there's lots of options. You can get kids games, all sorts of cool stuff. So iPads are really, really good choice. I never really travel without mine and I am a huge, huge fan and I recommend you pick one up because there's a lot of different options at some really good price points um, and yeah. 
Now moving on to number six, laptops. So I usually bring my laptop as well. I know I look like I'm a freaking rolling Best Buy walking into the airport, but I do bring my laptop because I like to one, do work on it while I'm on the plane sometimes. You know, when I was making music a lot, I used to like edit songs while I was on the flight. These days I'm editing videos while I'm on the flight. It's a really, you know, good time to just like block out all distractions. You don't really, unless you buy internet, you usually don't have access to the internet. So you're able to just kind of like hunker down and get some work done. Um, it's honestly a pretty productive situation in my opinion. So I usually always bring my laptop. I'm currently using the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So this is a new purchase for me. This will be my first flight doing it. I'll probably be editing this video on the flight, you know, along with some other ones. But yeah, I'm really excited. This computer is extremely powerful and it's able to get a ton of work done more than you know any MacBook that I've ever had in the past. And it's in a really nice portable package. I'm using the 14 inch, but it also comes in a 16 inch. So, you know, if you're looking to get like a new Mac, definitely a good option. But honestly, any laptop, it's a pretty safe bet. I also like to keep it in my backpack because I've just heard, you know, I used to work at an Apple store and a Best Buy and I've just heard too many horror stories of people leaving their laptops inside their checked bag and them disappearing. Even my girlfriend has had a computer stolen by leaving it in a checked bag. So it freaks me out a little bit, but you know, maybe I'm just over paranoid, but I always like to keep it in my backpack as well. And the, the bag that I talked about earlier has plenty of room for all this stuff that I've been talking about. Now, moving on to number seven, let's talk headphones. So there's a million different options out there, lots of good stuff, really just kind of depends on whatever it is you're looking for. But with all these content consumption devices, you're gonna probably want something to not bug other people and tune everything out while you're you know, consuming said content. So for me, I always bring two pairs of headphones with me. I know, again, a little excessive. That's kind of the theme of this video. But my go-tos are probably the AirPod Pros just because of how easy they connect to all my Apple devices. They have pretty good noise cancellation and pretty good audio quality. They're just overall super convenient. And then the other pair that I bring with me that I usually use when I'm like actually trying to watch something or I'm trying to really get the best noise cancellation are the Sony WH-1000XM4s. Really long name, I probably messed it up, but it's the latest noise cancellation headphones from Sony that are really good quality. Sorry, my dog. They're the latest headphones from Sony with noise cancellation and they're honestly phenomenal. They're probably the best in regards to noise cancellation on an airplane um, and I never go on any flight without them. They're top tier for sure. Now, number eight isn't really a piece of technology, but it's something that I think is super clutch when you're at an airport and that's gonna be a Heroclip carabiner. So this clip, it's honestly kind of unique you can get a couple different sizes, a bunch of different colors. Basically I have it clipped on the, you know, top strap of my backpack. And then anytime you wanna like, you know, set your bag down, but you don't wanna put it down on the ground, it actually has this little swivel design where it hinges out and lets you hook it on like, you know, a door or a shelf or something of that nature. Really the main use I have for it is like if I'm going to the bathroom or something like that and I don't wanna set my bag on the ground, I usually hook it on the door above and it's plenty strong enough to support all the stuff that I was talking about. It's just a really useful little thing. Sometimes I'll clip my sling bag to my backpack and have them all both kind of connected. It's just very versatile, it's pretty cheap and it's come in handy more times than not. So I usually always bring that. Moving on to number nine is actually gonna be a fast charger of some sort. So I talked about like, you know, the portable chargers where you don't have to be plugged into anything, but almost every time I go to a flight, I usually get there pretty early um, and I'm sitting in the terminal waiting for like boarding call and I wanna make sure all my devices are charged up to full capacity before I actually get on the flight where I'm not gonna have the wall plug most likely. So. Zira has a really good 65 watt GAN charger that actually has multiple ports and lets you charge up a couple different devices at once um, and charge it pretty quickly as well. And it's GAN tech as well, so it's like safe charging. Honestly, this thing is pretty clutch and I usually just keep this in my backpack in a pretty easy to access spot so that if I'm sitting waiting for like an hour or something before my actual flight boards, 
I'll just plug it into one of those little outlets that are usually on the chairs that you can sit at at an airport. Um, and I'll just charge my devices up. Other people too that you're traveling with will probably thank you for having the charger as well because then they can all charge their devices up. It's a pretty sweet little travel gadget. You can also use it as your charger whenever you end up at your destination. Like, you know, if you're going to like your parents' house or a family member's house or something like that, you'll just have one charger that you can use to charge up all your stuff. It's super convenient. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about, number 10, is gonna be AirTags. So, AirTags, not only do they make a really good gift, I think, for anyone who uses Apple products, but I think they're just kinda of one of those like, you know, rather be safe than sorry type of things that I usually put with all my bags whenever I travel. Just in case something goes missing or you know it's lost or someone grabs my bag from you know the carousel or whatever it may be or I leave it when it, wherever I'm sitting and I forget to take it. They're basically these little tracking tags that make it really easy to find whatever it is that you lost. So when I'm traveling, I usually have one in each of my bags. So as far as my checked bag, I usually hide it inside my check bag. I usually hide it in all my bags, honestly, because if somebody sees an air tag like hit, hanging on the outside of whatever it is that it's tracking, it'd be pretty easy for a thief to just take it and throw that away. So I usually try to hide it somewhere in my bag. They have a bunch of different like accessories as far as like how you can attach them to your bags and things of that nature. But I personally think that it's better to be safe than sorry, especially if you're traveling with a bunch of, you know, expensive clothing or gear or anything like that. Well worth the 30 bucks that it costs for one of the little trackers. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. That's been my 10 tech accessory items that I never travel without. I will have links to all the stuff that I talked about along with some additional options in the description down below. So if you wanna grab anything and you use the links that I've left down below, it'll help out the channel and it won't cost you anything extra. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite item was on the list or what your favorite item is to travel with. I honestly am super interested to see what other people do. I love watching these kind of videos because I pick up little things that you know I never thought about that make kind of my whole experience smoother. So who knows, maybe next year I'll do an updated version with whatever it is you recommended. So definitely leave a comment down below. I always like to hear from you guys. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it more than I can say. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.